Now we want to discuss the range function. And I put function in quotes because technically it isn't a function, but since it behaves like one, we'll go ahead and discuss it as if it were a function. First we'll discuss what it does, and then we'll discuss what it's used for. And it turns out to be used for quite a bit, and despite how much it's used, it's basically a very simple function. So what does range do? Well, range generates a sequence of integers, and that's it. When we call range, we could provide it with one, two, or three arguments, and let's describe those in broad brush, and then we'll get into some of the details. So one of the ways we could use range is we could write range, and then something we'll call start, then a stop, and then inc, and that will be for increment, and that's the three argument form. Alternatively, we could call it with just two arguments, and when we do, those are a start value and a stop value. And in this case, when the increment isn't given, it's assumed to have a default value of 1. And finally, we could call range with a single argument, and when we do that, it's assumed to be the stop value, and here, the default value for the increment is still 1, and the default value for the start is equal to 0. I said range generates a sequence of integers, and the values are given by the first one is the start value, the next is start plus the increment, the next one is start plus 2 times the increment, the one following that is start plus three times the increment, and this continues on until reaching the stop value, but the stop value itself is not included in this sequence. So think of stop like a stop sign. You're supposed to stop in front of it before actually getting right to it. Same with this sequence. We stop before the stop value. Now let's consider some examples where we use the range function. And to see the values that range produces all at once, we have to enclose it as the argument to the list function. And when we use range the way we normally would, we wouldn't do this. We wouldn't use it as the argument of the list function. And what I mean by using the range function as we normally would will become clearer later. But first, let's get to some examples. Let's start with the three argument form of the range function, and let's say the start value is 1, the stop value is 10, and the increment is 1. Now, if I just hit return here, we get something strange. We just get range 1, 10, it looks like it's thrown out uh, the increment value, but by default, that was 1. But this isn't what we want to see. We want to see that sequence of integers that range produces. And this is why we have to give it as an argument to the list function. So we could say list your argument is the range function. And now we'll put a start of 1, a stop of 10, an increment of 1. And now when we hit return, we see that list of integers that starts from 1. And then successive values are incremented by 1. And it goes up to, but doesn't include, the stop value of 10. Now I'm going to recall that command, and I'll change the increment value from 1 to 2. And now when we hit return, we get 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So successive values are incremented by 2. And we might be curious, can the increment be negative? So I'm going to recall that previous command. I'll start with a value of 10. I'll say the stop is 0 but the increment is minus 1, and sure enough, that works. We get a count down rather than a count up sequence. It's possible for the range function to generate no integers. I'll go back and recall the command where we had a start of 1, a stop of 10, and now I'll make the increment minus 1. Okay, we can't get from 1 to 10 counting by minus 1, and so in this case, no integers are produced. Again, if we call the range function with two arguments, the increment is assumed to be positive 1. So let's recall that previous command, 
and just eliminate the increment. Now it is plus 1, and we get the sequence 1 through 9. If we have a start value that's greater than or equal to the stop value, then no integers are produced. So let's have a start value of 10 and a stop value of 9, but leaving the default increment of plus 1, we can't get to 9 from 10, and so no integers are produced. Now let's consider the one argument form where the start value has its default of 0 and the increment has the default of 1. So if we go with a range of 10, we enclose this in the list function, we get a sequence of integers, but now starting at 0, and notice that the stop value is 10, and there are 10 numbers in this, but they start at 0, go up to 9, and do not include the stop value. Okay, so the range function is pretty simple, right? So why is it so useful? And now let's consider some examples where we're actually using it, and assume we want to do something a certain number of times. We use the range function as the iterable in the for loop header to ensure the loop is executed a given number of times, and as a somewhat silly example, let's say we want to write hello four times. We could write this. We could say for i in range four. So that's the header, and again, when we're actually using range, as in this example, we don't enclose it as the argument of the list function. And now, let's just say we want to print hello, and this should execute four times because the range function with a stop value of four will produce the integers 0, 1, 2, and 3. And sure enough, we see hello four times. Here the loop variable was the identifier i, and that wasn't used at all in the body of the for loop, and that's perfectly fine, and all we're doing here is using that header to make sure the body is executed four times. And for loops are sometimes called counted loops, and here we're just ensuring the count is four, and we simply ignore the identifier i. Now let's do something a little bit more practical. Let's write some code that allows the user to specify the number of grades related to some course, and the goal is to obtain the average of those grades. And this time we won't store the grades in a list, we'll just sum them as they're being entered, and then calculate the average after we have all the grades. This time we'll also use the loop variable in the body of the loop, but simply to yield a more informative prompt for the entry of data. And to accomplish this, we'll use the str function, and this function converts its argument to a string. And as an example of that, how about if we just call this str function with an argument of 5, and it gives us the string version of 5. And how we might be able to use this, let's say we're trying to construct a prompt, we might say enter grade, and we want the grade number, so let's concatenate this with some string version of a grade number, and then concatenate that with a colon and a space, and now we get enter grade 5 colon, and that looks like it might be a good prompt for the input function. So now let's write the code to accomplish this, and we have this wrapped into some program where we might assign to the variable num the integer version of whatever we get from the user when they are prompted with enter number of grades. In other words, the number of scores that we want to obtain the average for. Let's say there are five grades. Now we'll initialize an accumulator, let's say that's total, and that's equal to zero. Now let's have a for loop where we'll say for i in range num, whatever value num has, we will execute this loop that many times. And num has the integer value of five, so the body of the loop should be executed five times. Now let's start off by assigning to the identifier prompt, a string that we'll construct. We'll say it is enter grade, and then we will concatenate to that the string version of the loop variable i 
plus 1. So we could think of this as the assignment number or the grade number. And we'll start from 1 instead of from 0. Range with an argument of num will produce the integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But we'd like to prompt the user with enter grade 1, 2, and so on. And we will concatenate this a colon and a space. And that's going to be our prompt. And now we'll take this accumulator total and assign to it its old value plus the integer version of whatever the user enters when they're prompted with that prompt we just constructed. And we'll go ahead and assume that all the grades are integer values. And now let's hit return twice. We have the prompt of enter grade 1. Let's go with 90. Grade 2, maybe 74. Grade 3, 80. Grade 4, 82. And then let's say grade 5 is a 95. Now what is total? It's the sum of all those grades. If we want to display the average now, all we have to do is say we will print. Let's give it a string of average is equal to. And then calculate the total divided by the number of scores that we have, the five scores. And in this case, the average is 84.2. And we'll stop there. And in the next video, we'll consider more of the ways in which the range function comes in handy.